so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season seven. I want to say episode 13. I feel like it is, but it might not be. So let's All get right. into so it. So before we get into the review, y'all, let's get a little spicy. The only thing I really want to talk about is Karen versus Sharice and Karen pulling out some receipts and Sharice having a rebuttal to some of the things that she said. The whole Jacqueline and Mia thing, I kind of don't care anymore. But real quick, T, Mia seems to gotten back in her, got her company back, uh, gotten back in the good graces of the board because she just posted that she's opening up another joint chiropractic. And my thing is like, was the whole you and Gordon being kicked out and being destitute, was that just for storyline purposes? Like she, Mia's with the antics. Mia is a stunt queen and that's just what she is. Because if someone got kicked out of their company, I don't think they would still be able to open up more like chiropractic firms. I just, I, it's weird. Mia's weird. And then Jacqueline. I think Jacqueline is taking this whole, like, I was done so wrong by my friend to, like, martyr level. Like, I saw her stories. My thing about it is, I feel like in the story, Jacqueline pretty much said what Mia said about her was true. Because she says... Uh, in the story, I think she was like, let me own my my truth or my story and uh, and you own yours. Or like, you can own yours, but let me own my own. Which makes me feel like in a roundabout way, you're saying that like she's telling the truth that I was out here in these streets like that. And I just want to be able to tell my story. I just feel as though Mia and Jacqueline are cut from the same cloth. Mia just probably was smarter in the sense that she caught a big fish, i.e. Gordon, and Jacqueline didn't. It is what it is, girl. You you even in that post, she was like, I was trying to ground my friend. That's not your job. Like, you're, you're an adult. I, like, I'm not grounding nobody. I might say a few things, but it's not my sole job to ground you. Like, I'm an adult. You're an adult. Ground yourself. So it feels like Jacqueline is putting putting out. But this whole Karen and uh, Sharice thing. So Karen posted on Sunday about why she really has beef with Sharice. And honestly, to me, she said a bunch of nothing. She talked around in circles. If you want to check out the video, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to link the information below, but I also think it's on Karen's YouTube channel. But I know I saw the clip of the video on All True Tees page on Instagram, so check them out. Um, but Karen basically was saying that Sharice's coins have dried up, that like her real beef with her is like, she doesn't feel like Sharice was being genuine and all this stuff. And so Sharice responded in the comments on all true tea and said this, she said she can keep practicing her lies in the mirror as she prepares for the reunion. And she can keep wishing my coins would go away. They won't at the end of the day, truly original and Bravo can continue to clean her up and make her look like whatever her delusional mind wants it to be. She makes good TV. TV. The real reality is Karen Kuger is still one of the local drunks of Potomac. Instead of thinking about me, she should think about going back to rehab and redoing the program that she never completed many years ago. Happy Sunday, everyone. So my thing about that, I don't really think it's that deep. But I also think a lot of people are being hypocritical when they feel like Sharice is going so low to mention rehab when the same person, i.e. Karen, y'all fave, was the one who decided to say Giselle had a fiery box alluding to the lady I possibly having an STD, then saying she went to Sing Sing, talking about that the lady went to a mental institution allegedly after her breakup with Giselle, not just with Jamal. So if she can talk about someone possibly having an STI or an STD and Sharice can mention you possibly being a drunk on the low and, and having to go to rehab in Florida. It is what it is. It is what it is. So the last thing is Karen. So Karen decided to post the actual text message that she allegedly sent to Sharice. A lot of people don't feel like it's real. Some people feel like Karen made this like on one of those texting apps, but I haven't seen Sharice come out and dispute it. So it could be her, but this is what Karen sent to Sharice. She says, Sharice, my family and I want to extend our condolences on the passing of your father. Know that God is in charge and he is at rest. If there's anything I can do, please let me know when time permits, I will 
would like to address where flowers are being received. If there is a charity you would like to use to donate in the memory of, please advise. Again, both you and your family are in our thoughts and prayers. Then Sharice responded, oh, and she ended it with love, Karen. Then Sharice responded with, thank you, Karen. Your kindness and thoughtful words mean a lot during this difficult time. So like I said, Sharice hasn't come out and disputed it, but you know, that's more than one word text message. <laughs> so let's get All into right, this. Y'all. So the episode opens up where we left off, where the ladies are arguing at the table. Mind you, it's only the first night. I could not go anywhere with them. They know how to kill a vibe because the whole altercation that happened with Wendy and Mia happened the first night they were in Miami. Now it's the first night in Mexico and y'all arguing like this. And I'm like, look, girls trips or trips in general, when you have a bunch of people everybody's social media after a while plummets I know mine does so I feel like this type of beefage would happen or this type of like situation would happen say we're on like a four-day trip on the third night and then everybody would try to like get back together on the morning before we're supposed to leave this is our like like they kill vibes they kill vibes and then on top of that for Giselle to be like this geriatric fight on last uh <laughs> last um last episode and I didn't mention it girl Giselle's 52 Karen's seven I'm about to say 79 <laughs> Giselle's 52 Karen's 59 and uh Sharice is 57 you can't call somebody geriatric when y'all are in the same numbers group ma'am you're geriatric that's a read on yourself now that this was coming out of candace or ashley's mouth who are like in their 30s i would get it but like you're 52 50 they're 57 and 59 you're in the same clique sis talking about yourself that's what you're doing so like i said we're still we're we're still at the dinner table. And honestly, it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. You got Karen. So the way in which the sequence of events happened, Sharice hit the table first when she was arguing with Karen. Karen hits the table as well. But Karen got up first and started pointing her finger and saying, well, what you will not do is disrespect my mother because I'll beat your ass. <laughs> and then Sharice, after that, stood up and did <laughs> This reminds me so much of like when the old people at church, you know, the songs start to get to them and they can't clap. They just be like, just do that's what it did to me. I said, Sharice, what is this? She was like, girl. So Sharice is like, what's up? And Karen's like, and I said, girl, I don't know if you want it with Sharice. So everybody at the table is trying to calm them down, except Jacqueline. I feel like Jacqueline stays seated, but everybody else is just like, whoa, you got Wendy, <laughs> you got Wendy, um, Ashley and Candace's eyes big as I don't know what, like they just can't believe that the aunties are fighting, which I couldn't believe it. I said, oh, y'all is rowdy tonight. Y'all is rowdy tonight. So you have like Candace and Wendy trying to calm Karen down. You got Candace, like, you know, center yourself, like you doing a lot, like sit, calm down. You have Wendy suggesting like, Hey, can we go take a walk? You have Giselle trying to get Sharice to chill out. You have Mia even trying to get Sharice to chill out. And Giselle is like, she didn't say nothing about your mom. What are you talking about? And they end up sitting down and everyone kind of starts to calm down. And from what Karen is saying, Karen feels as though like Sharice showed her true colors, which I was like, Karen, you showed yours because the whole time they're fighting, you hear Karen saying, show them who you are. I'm like, ma'am, you're the one yelling, pointing at someone, threatening to beat their ass. She didn't say anything until you got rowdy. So at the end of the day, y'all both was doing a lot, banging on tables, but you were the ones who was being more aggressive than her. So I said, you showed us who you are. So... Um, Karen pretty much feels as though like Sharice going to her mom's funeral was disingenuous and she feels as though that Sharice is using that as her way back into the group. Sharice's whole thing is like, no, I was saying that I was there for you when you had a, someone passing your family and you were not there for me. In my opinion, I feel as though 
Karen did this to herself. And the reason why I say that is y'all started off the conversation and Karen pretty much when Sharice was like, well, I was going through a divorce and my father died. And what did you, and what did you do for me? And Karen said, I sent out a text message. That's all I could give you. And so Sharice was like, well, I went to your mother's funeral. And I'm like, well, if you're so, if your way of like showing that you care about her is just sending a text message, well, she's like, you know why I went the extra mile and drove to drove to uh, to pay my respects to your mom. And Karen's whole thing is like, well, what let me know that Sharice wasn't there for me or wasn't trying to be there for real is that she put her head in the limo to let me know that she was there. And I was like, that doesn't make sense to me because as someone that has had somebody recently pass in their family, a lot of people came up to me and my family, people that I haven't seen in years. Like I'm talking about when I was a child, they came up to me and was like, paying their respects, shaking my hand or giving me a hug, wanting to pay their respects to my to my family member. So I feel as though that's a reach to me because I would understand where Karen's coming from. And I know a lot of people are probably not going to like this video because y'all are going up for Karen right now. And that's your right. I'm not going to hate on that. But I find that Karen's not making sense to me and why I feel like it's a reach is because it would be different if we had this information beforehand. If we saw Sharice like taking pictures at the grave site, because I've seen people do that, or if she posted the funeral procession, or if she posted a message saying that she attended Karen's funeral to let people know that she was there showing her support. We didn't see any of that. So to me, she wasn't clout chasing. I think she actually was coming from a sincere place to be there just to be like hey I'm here for you I think what bothers Karen is that Sharice put a little more stank on it and was like none of your friends were there your friends so it is what it is and I'm supposedly not your friend but I showed up so they're sitting down at the table we find out at Karen's um just uh, Sharice did drive four hours to go to the funeral and there were no cameras there. They start arguing about how one doesn't have friends. One has burned bridges. One breaks up families. One's a cheater. So Sharice's whole thing is like Karen's a cheater. She a, a recovering alcoholic. She said that Karen was in Florida going to rehab and when she didn't really complete the program, once she got out, they went to the club or they went partying. Karen's whole thing is like Sharice be breaking up families and she can't go to the local Safeway. I, when we was back in Virginia, we was a Giants family. We ain't really go to Safeway. But if you want to know, Safeway is the local um, grocery store chain in certain areas. So she was saying she couldn't go to Safeway. They bring up the whole cheating rumors again about Karen being out here cheating on Ray. And then they tabled it. I think Ashley was the one that spoke and was like, can we table this? Because this is a lot. So then Candace brings up about the whole Jacqueline and Mia situation and how they should really talk because Jacqueline let Candace know that she's really hurt by what Mia did. So we move on and we see it's 30 minutes later. We see Ashley, Karen, not Karen, Candace, even Sharice and Wendy dancing in the bar area of the hotel, dancing the drive back and having a fun time. While that's going on, we see Mia and Jacqueline have a conversation and they're sitting down and Jacqueline's like, what you did was wrong. It was disrespectful. I would never do you like that. And Mia was like, what did I do? Like, like explain it to me. And Jacqueline's whole thing was like what you said. And then they flash back. And then Jacqueline keeps bringing up Gordon. And I'm like, she never said you slept with Gordon. And But Jacqueline was like, she felt like Mia was alluding that she slept with Gordon. And I'm like, you're the one that's incriminating yourself because she never said you slept with Gordon. So it is making us look at you sus. Like, are you like, are you copying to something that you want to do or that you did? So then Mia's like, well, you should own like what you've done. And Jacqueline's like, what do you mean? And like, she was like, you know, and then Jacqueline's like, I've never slept with married men. And I think what gagged Jacqueline was when Jacqueline was like, well, you was Gordon married when you got with him? And Mia said he was, and I owned that. And I was married and Jacqueline didn't have nothing to say because Mia left the room as she was leaving the room, Jacqueline was like, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And I think Jacqueline didn't expect Mia to own, like to say, yeah, no, I slept with him, went with him when he was married and I was married. What have you done? Honestly, I feel like birds of a feather, birds of a feather flock 
together. I genuinely feel like they probably were out here being city girls in their younger years, and they both had different paths in life. Mia met Gordon and decided to be a housewife. Jacqueline met who she had, and it didn't work out the same way, and now she's coming back. I really do feel like that's probably what happened. And like I said in the spicy corner, when Jacqueline posted that story where she was like, you own yours, I'll own mine, and I could expose you. I'm like, Mia kind of already like exposes herself in a roundabout way. Sometimes we can't tell if it's true or if, or if it's not. But she told us that G was married already. She didn't tell us that she was married, but she told us that G was married. So it's like you trying to throw that dig at her didn't hit because we already knew. So in a way, Mia kind of protects herself by being so outlandish and constantly saying like stupid stuff and flipping things because that read that Jacqueline was trying to throw it or that shade that Jacqueline was trying to throw at Mia, it didn't work. And if you're going to expose her and say that you're going to expose her, expose her. Give us something else to talk about. All right, y'all. So it's the next day and they're doing yoga. Ashley is the instructor. If this was an advertisement for her being the instructor, she failed at it horribly because I was not impressed. And I'm a person that actually enjoys sometimes, sometimes doing yoga. Um, we have a sit down with Karen and Candace. Candace looks so cute in that black um, swimsuit with that big hat. I feel like she looked like one of the like 1950s pinups girls. She looked cute to me. And they were sitting at one of the cabanas, ignoring Ashley when she was trying to get them to come do yoga. And they just had a conversation. Karen and Candace. Candace asking Karen, like, how are you? Like, how do you feel about Sharice? And Candace, Karen basically saying, like, I'm not friends with Sharice, but Sharice is friends with people in this group. So I can be friendly and I can be cordial. But Sharice let me know who she is and I feel as though Karen you let Sharice know who you are <laughs> so um they move on we end up seeing everyone going to the cenote they're all getting in the sprint to go to the cenote one thing I will say is I'm tired of Karen harping on Robin about this whole is she gonna get married is she not gonna get married like in the beginning it was funny like earlier in the season because it was funny, but now it's annoying and it's becoming pestering because she's told everyone that she's not inviting y'all to the wedding. She's not allowing y'all to be there. Like, it's just going to be her and her boys and her to like, you know, and her son, not her son. Well, you know, she just seemed like she used to be taking care of one, but you know, her two boys and her, and her husband. And I just feel like she's already told y'all why y'all keep asking about it. So when next episode happens and Robin gets at Karen, I'm okay with that because it's like, she's told you several times, several times to lay off of it. And you're not, you just keep constantly asking her about it. They get to the cenote. It's beautiful. I had the pleasure to go to one. They are beautiful. That water is so gorgeous. It's so clear, but it's deep in there. So I understand why everybody had on a life vest. The only people that were not, that didn't have on life vests when we were out there were the locals. But I feel like, you know, that was probably their, like, that was like the neighborhood swimming pool for them. But it was beautiful. It is gorgeous. But, and like the, uh, the, person who was explaining it, I guess he would be like a tour guide. The Mayans did use them a lot for spiritual reasons. I know we were told that um, some of them felt as though like it was the portal to the underworld. So when they would ask for certain things or like the afterlife, they would go there, but they are beautiful. But for Ashley to be like, she's been to so many and it's a spiritual and cleansing situation. I was like, it ain't cleansed you. Cause you still, a, <laughs> you still the way you are. <laughs> Your light bulb headed fiend. And so the only thing that got on my nerves was all the ladies complaining about the bugs. I'm like, girl, you're not going to get malaria. Like you got your shots. Calm down. Sit down and take in the beauty of nature or shut up and get back on the spread. Be quiet. So they all go sit down to like eat and like, you know, just take their minds off of things. And mind you, at most of the cenotes, they do have like a restaurant there where you can get food. That food be good. One thing I like, you know, the thing I will always give the Mexican people, they know how to cook pork. The way everything I tried in Mexico that had pork on it was delicious. I mean, I was, I could eat pork all day if I was down there because it was so like juicy and seasoned so well. It wasn't dry. Huh. Y'all know how to do that. Y'all know how to do that. 
So they sit down at the table and Karen kicks up the up the mess where she asks is, is Ashley and Candace okay? And they bring up Deborah. <laughs> They bring up Deborah, uh, Deborah, uh, about how Ashley brought Deborah to Karen's event to confront Candace. And honestly, Candace read down in the nicest way. She didn't raise her voice. She was very, and I think sometimes even a read can be kind in a way. And it was to me, I think it was kind. I think it was a kind read, but it was a read nonetheless, because Ashley pretty much said that like, we, well, I'm not even going to rehash that. Ashley is pretty much like we all been saying, is still holding on to the way she feels as though Candace has wronged her. She brings up the whole miscarriage situation that happened, I think I want to say season four. She also brings up, um, I that was season four or season four. Yeah, season four. Yeah, it was season season four. She also brings up like the whole Candace letting her know about Michael cheating at the MGM casino up there, and how she just was like, Candace never apologized. Now that she's going through like trying to get pregnant, why haven't like she felt like Candace should have like she felt like Candace would have had a change of heart and come talk to her about the whole miscarriage thing. And here's my thing. I'm not gonna lie. I felt like Ashley wasn't very sincere in that moment as well when it came to her talking at the rainbow party that Monique had. But I will say that's during the time where I really didn't see it for Ashley. So I my judgment could have been clouded. But she does owe, like Candace does in my sense, owe her an apology. And I feel as though Candace have, has apologized. Ashley just never accepted it. But like I said, Candace read her down. Because when Candace pretty much said... I want and I hope for you today, one day to have the same love that I have with my man where I don't have to question him because I know my man. I know my man. You deserve to be with someone where you don't have to be going through their phones and checking to see who they with and where they are. That that makes you insecure and makes you project and lash out on everyone. So I hope one day you find that. And that's basically what she that's basically what it is. Ashley is projecting or wanting for Candace to go through the same strife that she went through because she felt like Candace did her wrong as well as they pretty much have the same mirrored experience. They're both pageant queens, they're both the youngest in the group and they both kind of had the same thing of like wanting to sing and wanting to have these careers it's just that for one it is working out more, better for the more than the other one but it was a read nonetheless when she told her I know my man like you know you pretty much like you know yours my man wouldn't do that to me find you a good one <laughs> that's what it was and then Wendy chimed in, Ashley apologized, but Wendy was like, when we're all together, when it's just the three of us, we have a good time. I just think you guys have to let the past go. And Candace is like, I've let it go. Ashley always brings up something to derail our like progression. And then I got to fight with her. So talk to her, which is true, which is true. I feel as though Candace and Ashley could have not had this situation had Ashley not brung Deborah in into this situation or have brung up Deborah in front of the group. If Ashley really wanted to have a relationship with Candace or be on even ground or just be somewhat really cordial with her, she would not have done what she has done. So it's like Ashley did apologize, but if I was Candace, I'd just be like, keep my good eye on her and wouldn't trust the lady. That's just me. So they said they gonna live and let live and move on. When they get back to the hotel, we see a situation between Ashley and Sharice, where Ashley basically said that she was proud of Sharice for standing up to Karen. And Sharice was pretty much like, I was just trying to say she's not a good friend. And then she brings up how all Karen did was give me like one text message and that's it. She also is just kind of like, I've heard a lot of things about Karen and I heard that Karen isn't really a great friend to anyone. So I was just trying to be that to her. They then we see everyone get ready and they all um, get dressed up because they're going to a restaurant in town to eat dinner. We find out that Robin is supposedly going to get married in Jamaica after her brother gets married, but they're not going to tell anyone because they don't want to overshadow her brother getting married. And it's just going to be her, her son's. I keep saying sons. And then in my mind, things of Juan. It's going to be her, Juan, and the boys. And everyone is, like, happy, and they want to throw her a bachelorette party. Karen doesn't think they're going to get married, but it is what it is. That's what Robin said they're going to do. 
Then Giselle decides to start off the mess yet again where she basically says Sharice is the queen of Potomac. She doesn't like the way how Karen tried to um, pretty much defame Sharice's character. Sharice really not saying nothing. Giselle pretty much says, I need you to stop because this is dealing with my mother and I'm in it and I don't want to talk about it. And Robin and Giselle is like, no one's talking about your mother. And then Karen's like, well, my grief is my mother. And they're pretty much like, all you do is deflect. You do. That's all Karen does is deflect. If she doesn't want to talk about it, she brings up her husband or she brings up her kids or she brings up her mother. She never really wants to talk. So then Sharice pops in and she says, you know, I lost three siblings before getting this group together. And I lost a mother as well. I also lost my my dad and my sister during COVID. So it's like, if someone was being nice to me, I wouldn't think it would be as calculated. And I actually had a chance to watch the Carlos Kings interview with Sharice. And Sharice was able to explain more. So two years before they put together Real Housewives of Potomac, three, like her three brothers died in a span of two years. I said two weeks, my bad, in the span of two years. So she said she was doing Real Housewives of Potomac just to like clear her mind because she was like, it was too much going on. She also knew that her husband would want a divorce once she started Real Housewives of Potomac. She then said that she didn't even know Karen like that. She knew of Karen, but she didn't know Karen. And she said, Karen tried to sit at her table at a charity event when they were like like screening people for the show. So people just assumed that Karen was a part of the friend group. And because they felt like Karen was good for TV, Sharice was just like, yeah, she could be a part of this because she's great for TV. So Karen really didn't know Sharice and Sharice really didn't know Karen. Their friendship, I guess, began to build as they filmed the show or slightly before they started to film the show. Cause normally they'll film shows like two or a year out before we actually see it, especially if we don't know when it's going to premiere. So Sharice is pretty much like, girl, I set the table for this. Like, what are you talking about? So all of a sudden Robin gets into it and she just feels like Karen is full of it. She's like, everybody else can be called to the carpet, but we can't call you to the carpet. And I don't think that's fair because we've all been, been called out. Like Sharice, like she, Robin feels like Karen is just being really mean to Sharice, which some people feel like Robin's being really mean to Wendy, but they're pretty much like, we ain't seen them beef. So they seem to be okay. And Robin is just like, you did a lot. And you should be held to the fire for it. So then Karen apologizes, but she apologizes to everybody except Sharice. And Robin's like, you apologize to everybody except Sharice. And then Karen brings up just like Mia apologized to everybody except Wendy. And what we find out is that, um, I guess they kicked or Mia kicked Wendy out of the group chat. And she sent out a group text where she apologized to everybody else, but she didn't apologize to Wendy. So then... Mia like jumps in and she's like, um, why do I need to like, she's like, I'm not ready to apologize to her. And Wendy's like, you're not ready to apologize and you assaulted me. And then Mia's like, I didn't assault you. And Wendy's like, you did, you threw a drink in my face and hit me with your clutch. So then Mia tries to rebuttal and be like, do you know what it means for defamation? And Wendy's like, do you know what you did before you led up to the assault like what are we talking about so then she was like like you we were she was like I was trying to me is like I was trying to be a good friend to you because I was telling you what Peter said and then Wendy's like you don't know how to be a good friend ask your friend you sit next to for 30 years and how you doing her so then I was like mm, okay Wendy that's the point so then she and then Wendy says, well, you've been going around telling everyone I called your husband gay and I did not. And then Mia's like, well, you said he was sleeping with men. So they roll back to when Robin was filming and they were like, when Wendy said you and your husband be sleeping with men and women, go and do that. Like you must have slept with Peter or what yada, yada, yada. And Wendy's like, I never said your husband slept with men. I said y'all like to sleep with together with men. That doesn't mean that he's sleeping with men. That means that he's probably like watching you. But if he is, 
I don't care. Because then Mia tried to be like, so what's wrong with that if he is gay? And Wendy was like, I never said he was gay and I never said there was anything wrong with it. So Mia trying to put this whole like homophobic like banner over Wendy. And that's not what she said, girl. You're the one insinuating. So then that's when Mia lets it out the bag that like, because I think Wendy was like, I said that you were sleeping with Peter. I said, I said, Peter doesn't mess with y'all because you were sleeping with his girlfriend. And then Mia's like, no, she was actually my girlfriend before she was slept, like before she slept with Peter. So before, like, you know, before she got with Peter. So you got Candace in the confessional saying, you can take the hoe out the strip club, but you can't take the strip out the, like, did she say it? You can take the hoe out the strip club, but you can't take the strip out the hoe. Whatever. She said something like that, but then she said, I'm sitting at a table full of hoes. There's hoes at banks, there's hoes at the grocery store, and I'm sitting at a table full of hoes. So, out of nowhere, like a child, Mia blurts out, well, I'm sorry I threw the drink on you. There, like, what's that? Let's move on. And I'm like, that's not how you apologize, and that's not how you move on. So... Wendy's just looking at her like, girl, what? Everyone's kind of like, girl, what? Looking at me like that wasn't a good apology. So then they start talking about the whole situation again. And Wendy basically saying, I have stuff to lose. I have real stuff to lose. You don't. And you're a gutter. She's called her a gutter ass bitch. I said, ooh. She said, you showed who you were. So everybody at the table is like, ooh. Okay. And then Mia's like, I own all my flaws and my faults. And I'm like, just because you own it, that doesn't mean anything if you don't try to actively correct the behavior. Just saying. Just saying. So they're like, whatever. Like, they end up being like, God, it's time to go. All of a sudden, Wendy is continuous like she's still talking at the table as Mia's getting up Mia like so Wendy's like I'm successful I'm this I'm successful and then Mia's like you don't have to keep saying it and then Wendy's like you're just pressed and you're pressed about my life you're just mad because my life's better than yours you're just jealous and then the conversation ends there I was like Ugh. If I can be honest with y'all, I'm ready for Potomac to be over and I'm ready for like New Jersey. Cause at this point, I'm just over it. I could have did the video, like my review yesterday, but I said not on Martin Luther King Day. Not gonna bring this chaos to my peaceful day. But the truth of the matter is, is like, I this season is kind of just, it started off with a high, but now it's turning into a dud to me. Because I don't like the way in which I'm seeing people react to Sharice. Like, I get it. If you don't like Sharice, don't have to like her. But I feel as though a lot of the... And I I feel... Because I'm not even going to bring up the colorism issues. What I feel is though, it's like a lot of people who are fans of these shows just want to be nasty and mean to somebody who can't touch them. Because I've seen very, like, very nasty things about Sharice. And I'm like, y'all call Sharice boring. Y'all call her lame. But yet, y'all also say she's a villain and she's this and she's that. And I'm just kind of like, what is it? But then I've also seen people talk about the way she looks. I.e., like, like how she looked like a wet dog. People calling her a sloth. I've seen people be very, like body shaming her like like what y'all think Candace is doing and what I've seen don't even compare from the fans that watch this show I'm just ready for this season to be over and for them to get to the reunion so I can move on to something else that is not that bad that's not that wishy-washy or like because y'all change so much when it comes to Potomac fans or, or, or y'all tend to make things get toxic because y'all go to like this place but yeah, that's it. That's all. Remember to be bravely authentic and hop down in them comments below. Do <laughs>